Hey guys, it's Akeem here, back with some more Joan Midrangers. Look at our opening hand. Got two tapped lands to cultivate on the play, and then a bunch of spells. So if we don't draw our third land, we're pretty much dead in the water. So that's Mulligan here. We don't have any mana at all whatsoever. Here we've got two no castable spells. Here, I've got no red mana. I won't be able to play the Visionary until the third turn, but I guess that's better than a four card hand. Uh, so that's pretty shitty. Playing against Sky T. Clues, he's uh, He's a friend of mine, not uh, not some random guy from the lobbies. So uh, you know, normally when I do that, uh, play against somebody in a player match, I'll show you the opening lobby and start off a little blur. But I, I figured nobody would want to watch the loading screen, so I uh, figured I would just introduce him in these early slow turns. And I'll play a Grove Guildgate now. Did pick up a third land and a red source, which is good. At least now we'll be able to cast the resounding thunder when the time comes, and we can put the visionary into play next turn. And play the play the tap land. So I mean, I guess it's not the end of the world. Picked up a swamp too, so at least we're uh, at least we're moving along in the mana department. So Scotty Clues is playing blue black. Hasn't played anything yet, so we're just going to put another tap land in play and say go. Let's see if he's got to think twice here at the end of his turn. I have no idea what he's playing. There's no think twice in it though, at least not in his hand. Now he's playing white, so he's playing Esper. He could be playing an artifact deck, or he could be playing some kind of control deck find out here now. Uh, let's see if he's got raised the alarm and we'll, uh, we'll swing in at him for one. Alright, there comes in for one. Uh, I guess we're just going to play another visionary here before the land in case we picked up another tap land. We can just drop that in right now. Otherwise I will play the swamp, but no, I picked up anger the god, so I'll just put the swamp into play. Pass it over. Still no action from Sky to Clues over there. And it uh, looks like he may have missed his fourth land drop, so he's going to have to discard. I don't know if he's got anything that he can make use of in his graveyard. He's discarding Shialdred Whispering One. It's hard to pin him on a strategy based on that card, because uh, ever since she came into the format, she's pretty much become a staple of every single black deck that can afford to cast a seven mana card. So, so it's hard to say, but uh, with him having missed his fourth land drop, it's... Uh, it's probably not the greatest thing for him, but he's up to four now. He's still... Uh, Still not sure what he's doing. He could have an inspiration in his hand, you know, to, to do something like that. But for now, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep uh, chomping away at him with these little one ones here. Just gonna keep at that. And right now, uh, you know, we'll uh, cast a Seder Wayfinder and uh, let's see what kind of land we will pick up here. We'll get our six land into play and dump some stuff in the graveyard. So we, you know, our next four draws would have been three land. And a visionary, so uh, let's go get some more red mana. Because we've got all these nice red spells, and uh, if we ever top deck Inferno Titan or uh, Storm Breath Dragon, they are pretty red intensive. But he doesn't cast an inspiration, and uh, still not doing anything yet, so he must have uh, he must have played a pretty risky keep there. He's got Angelic Edict, but I mean, even if he gets to five mana, that uh, it's going to feel pretty bad for him to use a removal spell on uh, on my one ones. I'm starting to get at the point where I'm thinking about. Uh, throwing these at his face. We're not, we're not quite there yet, but uh, picks up a fifth land, but it is a tapped land. So he's going to untap at five. Hopefully there's no Bane Slayer in there. Really wouldn't like to see that, but we've got the Runescar Demon here. So we can swing for three here now. We can get a Wayfinder, get our seventh land, and if it is a Bane Slayer, we can go tutor up the removal for it. So for now, we will just cast the Wayfinder. Just uh, beating him up with the 1-1 army. And, uh, and go get the Swamp, which is the only option there and uh, we will see here you know gonna see why he kept his hand if it was just a three lander let's see if he's got that bane slayer in there no he's got a greyborn muse which is pretty good if he can untap with it but i'm going to uh at the end of his turn i'm going to shoot a resounding thunder at that he may have a cloud shift to save it but i've got another thunder for it and i don't mind spinning oh, he's got a god's willing same uh, same thing so he's going to give a pro red and then the Resounding Thunder uh, won't do anything. But I'm still going to kill it because I can't have him drawing extra cards. So I'm just going to hold on to the Rune Scar Demon until I know what I need. And for now I'm just going to be content to kill that Muse and swing for four. And, uh, and get him down to five. You know, it's possible that uh, I don't have Banefire in this deck. But that would have been a decent tutor option. But anyways, let's, uh, let's hit him down to five here now. Assault of the one ones. And let's, uh, let's see if he goes up to uh, 7 mana, drops a Resolute Archangel on my face, and undoes all that hard work that, uh, that I've just done to get him to this point. Don't know if he's got any way to get those cards back out of his graveyard in his deck. He's going to go just Planar Cleansing, 
which is uh, which is fair. Seeing as he's on five life with four power there. Question is now what to tutor for. And I think uh, I think I tutor for another rune scare demon. Honestly, when you don't know what to tutor for, the safest tutor is generally the second demon. So uh, we will go get that, and that way, if he answers uh, if he answers this demon, we can cast another one, and then we'll pick up you know Shieldra or something, and it's gonna. It's going to mean that he has to, if, if we just went straight for Shieldra, he'd, say he'd have to answer two cards. But as it stands, now he's going to have to answer three by chaining the two demons. So now he's going to go banish a priest, but I can anger the gods and get another tutor. He may have counter spells in his deck, but I've got two angers in my hand. So if he counters the first one, I'll, I'll gladly cast the second one. Doesn't seem like he has any creatures that are down low on the curve, so let's just try and get rid of that. I've only got three red sources in play, though, so I can't cast both of these on the same turn. So he does have another God's Willing. He's going to give a pro red. Okay. But I, I can't cast the other one. Not that I would, honestly, now that he's pro red. But uh, now I'm just going to go tutor up A. Now I think I will get... Now I think I will get the Shieldred. Is that what I get? Well, now that I'm out of cards, do I get Greatborn Muse? No, I think I think I just get Shieldred, honestly. Yeah, she's just too much advantage. Get the whispering one, and again I can. Uh, whoops, I can use that anger of the gods next turn to uh, to get my other rune scare demon back, hopefully. So let's see what kind of nastiness he's got now. Uh, when you, when you see the other, the opposing deck has got seven available mana, he could have his own rune scare demon. Could be lots of nasty shit. Uh, lots of nasty shit coming my way. You know, I uh, thought I had him pretty close to this, so he's just going to edict this one. And this is what I was saying about answering the. Uh, Opposing cards, but uh, he's got two cards left in his hand. Let's find out if he's got. He spent two God's Willings already. I don't know if he's playing Cloud Shift. If he is, it doesn't bother me because I'll at least get another tutor. So let's try and anger this thing away. See if he's got the protection. He doesn't, so we get a free tutor here. And now, now I think I get the Great War Muse. Honestly, I've got Shieldred in my graveyard, and you know I'm pretty much out of cards. So uh, this is going to gas me back up. So I'm going to put the Gravemore Muse in play. I'm going to hang on to the Shieldred, keep her in my back pocket. My opponent's on only two cards, and uh, he's dead to one smack from that Runescare Demon. So I'm just going to hold on to this. Uh, I'm just going to hold on to this gal until I find out whether or not he's got the answer. And if I untap with that Gravemore Muse, then I'll have uh, I'll have some nice card advantage flowing. So let's see if Sky Clues picked up the other Planar Cleansing here. He's got uh, some instant speed removal like Reprisal. He might wait, but he's letting me untap with the Gravemore Muse. That's at least going to get me another card. And I picked up an Infernal Titan and a Resounding Thunder. So Resounding Thunder, I can cycle this right now. Yeah, so I was going to say, he's got life gain. So he's going to try and put some life gain on this deck. So that he doesn't die. But I'm going to cycle a Resounding Thunder. I was going to, you know... I was going to go on a spiel there about how I could cycle this, but I'm not going to unless, uh, unless you know, I wait to see what he taps out for, and then, of course, he just goes ahead and puts Suffer the Pass on the stack, because he didn't want to suffer lethal from my 9 power on the board, but uh, Resounding Thunder gets in underneath before the uh, before the life game resolves and takes him out. Cycling on that card is pretty ridiculous. So uh, let's invite him back for another game. I don't know if he's going to change decks in between or not. I don't really care. <laughs> You know, just for a bit of fun, a bit of content for the channel. So, uh, speaking of that, I'm sorry that I've been out for the past uh, couple of days, you know. It's pretty bad, too, because i got a lot of new subscribers since uh, Force played my Jun deck on Friday. And all these people come over, and all of a sudden I'm not uploading anymore, you know, basically. But uh, my entire family's had the stomach flu for the past, uh, we'll call it three days now. Saturday night, my son got sick uh, into Sunday. Sunday night into Monday morning is when I got it, and then my daughter started throwing up last night, so... My wife has not gotten hit with the vomit bug just yet, but she's uh, she's not been feeling well, so I'm sure it's, uh, her turn is coming. So it's been uh, it's been a hard old couple of days, I must say. Just just started a vacation, just rewired the man cave on Saturday, like I said in one of my earlier videos. Bought so about an Xbox One, bought a new speaker, you know, stripped out a whole bunch of you know superfluous wires, and I'm really happy with it, and I'm very excited to to wake up on Sunday morning and just fucking play with it. And then the whole the whole sickness thing happened, and here we are three days later. So <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better. You know, everybody else is coming around too, um, except my wife. I don't, I don't know if she's going to get the uh, the full fledged sickness or not. You know, probably find out in the next day or two. All right, here let's have a look at this. So right here we're on the draw. We've got two land, but we can cast 
both of these two drops, and then we've got to cultivate. So we are pretty much we are pretty much set, you know, to get a turn three cultivate here, which is uh, which is what we're looking for. Scotty Clue starts with Orzhov Gilgate, so I assume he's on the same deck here. Picked up a black source, which is good. I'm gonna drop the red into play first, though. This deck has more red early on the curve with Ground Assault and Resounding Thunder. So that's uh, why I'm playing that over a black. But I'm just going to play the Force next turn and jam a two drop. So he's playing Lone Missionary. Maybe he's not playing the same deck. I really don't think like Lone Missionary would have been in. Maybe he's playing a black white uh, life gain deck this time. But either way, I'm going to put a Wayfinder in play. I could take a turn off. You know, I could take a turn off. But I've got good mana. I think I can Wayfinder and uh, stay away from a gate and probably just get a basic swamp. If I can pick up a basic swamp here, that would be good. There's only three in the deck, so I mean the odds are, are low. But if I can get one, I can cultivate next turn. But I mean, Basic Mountain does just as well. Drops some nice beefy dudes uh, in the graveyard. So that means I can play this Basic next turn and then cultivate. So not in the worst shape in the world. So uh, yeah, here we've got Lone Missionary. It doesn't look like there's any blue in his deck this time. If he attacks, we will gladly trade here. Doesn't look like he's planning on it though. So here we will. How much green? Okay, I've got two green on the battlefield, two in hand. That's four. I've got two red on the battlefield. Two in hand, that's four. I've only got one black mana in my hand, so I'm just going to cultivate for black black. And this will uh, let me play my Greyborn next turn if I want to. Because now I've got I've got the basic swamp that I can play next turn to, uh, to cast her. And I think I probably will, unless I need to kill something with Shadowborn. So we will find out now. Let's see if he attacks here or not. Still doesn't, and he misses a land drop, so... Uh, Gonna try and get ahead on that game again. So I am going to I am gonna swing here before I play anything. He's probably not gonna block since he hasn't been attacking. He doesn't seem like he's too willing to trade them off. So I'll get in for a point of damage. And uh, and then we'll uh, cast our double black Greyborn Muse, put a 3-3 in front of his 2-1. And start uh, start the process of drawing some cards if we manage to untap with it. So let's see if he attacks here. I wouldn't I wouldn't block. I, I mean I'm putting the 3-3 into play. You know, as a deterrent to his 2-1, but I, I, I value it too much to, you know, lose it to a Swift Justice or something like that, which is uh, a potential out in the life gain deck. So I certainly, oh, I've got a pair of Cultivates here. A pair of Cultivates. I think, honestly, I'm going to take this turn off to strip a bunch of land out of the deck. So let's Cultivate here. Let's uh, get everything that's not a forest out of the deck, and let's play a mountain, and then let's get everything, uh, two more forests out of the deck. So this deck, uh, as you can see, you know, I mean, it mulligans, even if it goes down to four, five, six cards, whatever the case might be, I'm going to swing through here. Because, again, he's showing me that he's, he's a little bit, uh, he's not representing any combat tricks with that 2-1, uh, so I'm really not uh, too worried about it. I may even block this time if he decides to attack, because i gotta, I got a stocked hand here. No, still, uh, he's still stuck on three mana. It's not the greatest place to be in the world, and I'm drawing a bunch of extra cards every single turn, so... Just going to throw down this here. I'm not, uh, I mean, I guess, I guess I just jam a Runescare Demon here and, uh, and go in for my baby girl Shialdred. I don't know. Is that who I go? That, I mean, she's the she's the de facto queen here. Although maybe Stormbreath Dragon since he's playing white. Yeah, protection from white. That's what I'll pick up. I mean, you know, Shialdred. Probably should have picked her up, but I mean, uh... anyways, anyways. Pass it over. Uh, I guess I'll just discard Grohl Gilgate here. I suppose I don't know. I have no idea. Mana's pretty much perfect. So let's see if he manages to pick up another land. I don't know how many he's playing in his deck. He's seen twelve. Only found three so far. So that is a twenty-five percent ratio, which is not the greatest thing in the world. Um, well, I think that's probably a sign of a concession. Oh, he just wants to gain four life. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. So now he's got a 3-2. And he's up to 25. So again, you know, the Greyborn Muse, it sticks, and you just uh, you just go hog wild with all the extra cards here. So how much mana? 7, 8, 9. I can have up to 10 on this turn if I wanted to. So I don't think I want to. I'll just play this one and this one and swing for 11 in the air. And then I'll play a Visionary. 10 in the air. Why did I think Stormbreath was a 5-5? Five, five? He's not. He's a 4-4. Four, four. 
My bad. So let's get in for 10 and just replace this Elvish Visionary with the random card in our deck off the top. And should have done it again, but I hit the Y button, you know. <laughs> just being lazy there, you know. Sky Tecluse is stuck on three mana. Oh, he's got up to four. I just kind of wanted to uh, hopefully get into a third game here rather than just prolong this one. I mean, the Storm Breath Dragon here, uh, when I activate Monstrosity, is going to hit him for the number of cards in his hand, which is seven. Now I'm just drawing a shit ton of cards here now. I don't know if he has what kind of removal he has in his deck, so let's just hit him for seven. If he's got an instant, he could cast it in response to lower the uh, the amount of cards in his hand. That instant could be Suffer the Past. So we'll see if he decides to spend it here. He's just going to play Safe Passage. So he's playing some kind of Fog thingy. Just fine. Let's put the Grohl Gilgate into play, and then uh, and then we won't attack. Because there's no point. He's played Safe Passage, so... Yeah, we'll just discard this gate here. So we've got a 7-7 seven, seven flyer now, and a 6-6 six, six flyer. And a Greyborn Muse on the other side of the table. So he's playing Undi Undying Evil in his deck, and we know that much. So I'm going to throw a Resounding Thunder at this. If he does have a counter for it, then I'll just Shadowborn it when I untap. You know, he's got a Cloud Shift, which is similar as protection for his dude. So it doesn't hit it, because he, he blinked it out. But uh, I get to draw an extra card again. And this time, just get to Shadowborn that thing. So we'll kill that. Another good thing about Shadowborn in this deck is we've got all sorts of fodder in, you know, these little one ones. So I'm just going to go balls to the wall here. Pretty sure Greyborn Muse has done enough work. So, no, he's just going to take it and say, let's get the hell out of here. Which is what I would have done, you know. <laughs> Certainly what I would have done. I got way out, you know, I mean, that Grey Boar Muse stuck early, and I didn't miss, I didn't miss, you know, I was hitting every single land drop, and he got stuck on three for a while, so I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty tough to win through that, so I'll invite him in for one, one more game, let's we'll see if he wants to come in here or not. Uh, let's see, where are you, brother? So yeah, I've got my Xbox One, uh, I've started the process of, of that, been playing around with it a little bit, I'm not too, uh, I'm not too familiar with the whole interface yet, I'm only, uh, it's, it confuses me how the game doesn't turn off. There's a few a few different things that confuse me about it. But I'm getting used to it. You know, just got to unlock all those fucking cards. Which, again, as I say, has proven to be a bit of a grind. So, you know, I, I'm not, I think I'm 50% of the way through Ravnica or something. Or not Ravnica, the first one. Innistrad. You know, maybe 25% of the way through Theros. And uh, I haven't touched any of the other, uh, any of the other areas. So I've certainly got a bit of work to do. It's tough playing with really bad cards all the time. I don't know how I don't know how the hundred card players do it. Don't know how they do it. You know, playing with playing with Moon Heron. Oh my God, Void Snare. Oh my God, no. So painful. Switcheroo. I mean, Switcheroo so bad. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into a game number three here now, and let's look at this hand. On the draw, again, we've got a turn two Wayne Feidner, which is going to get us our third land, and then we're just going to be able to double cultivate all the way up to probably a Runescar Demon, so this hand looks pretty good. And uh, I would love to see, he's playing, uh, Sky Clues is playing, is it Gilgate? I'd love to see a gate come up here so I can just play it off the top, but no. We see our third land, though, which is good, because now we can, uh, even if we pick up a, a gate off the Wayfinder, we can save it for later and still cultivate on the third turn. So now... Uh, so I don't know what if he's playing like an is it aggro deck with the Kiln Fiends, or I don't know if he's playing the uh, if he's playing the more controlling deck. So let's go in for a red source. Don't care where it comes from because we've got the cultivate basic gate. Doesn't matter. I want red mana. Got it. Okay. And there we go. So we've got three black sources total between hand and battlefield. We've got one red and two green. So I'm going to cultivate for red and green because I do need triple green and double red. So let's put this into play. Let's get the mountain into play and grab a forest into our hand. And let's skip ahead and uh, let's swing here. See if he's got, uh, see if he wants to kill it or not. I doubt he will, but uh, you never know. So there we go. Pass it on back over. He's going to, uh, he's going to shoot shock at my face right now. Okay. I don't know if he's got a whole whack of burn in his deck. Maybe he's playing some type of uh, heavy burn, but now he's up to, uh, Maybe he's got a Banefire and he's just going for broke here. Trying to burn me out before I can do anything about it. Picked up a third Cultivate. So right now I'm going to drop this into play. Uh, I don't know if it matters what I Cultivate for at this point. 
Could have counter spells, I suppose, but I guess this isn't really the spell that you want to counter. Pretty much got most of the basic land out of my deck at this point, and I've still got a third cultivate in my hand. So we're going to be able to start cycling these very soon. But we've got this, and he, he's not showing me any signs of, uh, of aggression, so I'm, I'm really thinking he could have uh, counter spells in there. So while he's just playing the land go game, I'm going to. Uh, I'm not going to cast my big stuff. I'm just going to. Uh, I meant to hit Y there. Uh, hit A instead. Wanted to play the gate, but I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess it doesn't really matter. Anyways, let's just cultivate again. Let's just get all these land out of the deck. Alright, bunch of forest in hand. How much mana do we have here now? Eight. Eight mana. There's another shock to the face. We're down to 16. Uh, but uh, we've only got 38 cards left in the library, so we've seen more than half our deck. There's no plot worms in the graveyard, so we've got a very, very high probability of drawing into one eventually. Picked up a Stormbreath Dragon, and we've got uh, 8 mana available. I can make it 9. 8 mana available, I guess. I guess I just Stormbreath. And then if he counters it, then I'll Rune Scar Demon. It resolves, though. Didn't think it would. He might, maybe he has a bounce spell or something. Honestly, didn't see that slipping through the net. Thought that was going to get countered pretty hard. So, no, well, let's just get him in for 5, down to 12. He's going to skull crack. Yeah, he's playing a burn deck of some kind. So that's going to hit me for 3, down to 13. Got a race here now. The race is on. He's up to 7 mana, playing, I think, twice. So Banefire is the card I'm worried about. He's got 7 mana in play. He can Banefire for X equals 6. But he'd have to pull off a couple of those, plus hit me with some other type of burn. And he's down to three cards in his hand. So uh, I'm not gonna... He's gonna Void Snare my Storm Breath Dragon to make me cast it again. But he's only got one blue mana, so uh, he can't counter it. So I'm just gonna get in for... Uh, I'm just gonna get in for five again. And then I've got that Resounding Thunder that when I untap with it, it's gonna be pretty scary. Because that's six to his face that he can't counter, even with a negate or something, so... There's five, and uh, obviously we can't cast a Shadowborn Demon unless we want to uh, kill our own uh, kill our own Wayfinder, but then we'd have to sacrifice our own Storm Breath on upkeep, so that would be a pretty bad play. He's just drawn two cards, and now he's up to eight mana. Still, that's only Bane Fire for seven. That's only half my life total. And if he taps out for it, because he's got the other Bane Fire in hand, then he's just and he's just dead while he's tapped out. So, so let's see how many bounce spells and other sorts of things that he has. What has he spent so far? I mean, just uh, burn spells, draw spells, bounce spells. So here comes the Banefire. Yeah. He should, you know, I guess if, if he doesn't kill the Storm Breath, then he's just dead. Yeah. So there's that. He's got counter spells open. So let's see if I can actually connect with this 1 1. Because if I do, I can then just cycle a Resounding Thunder. I very highly doubt he's going to have any instant speed life gain in his deck. In, uh, in blue red. I actually don't know if it's even possible. So we get in, get him down to six, and then we can just cycle this and throw it at his face. Can't counter it, and he can't gain any life. So that's the game, and there it is. Uh, episode. What episode is this? We're on Tuesday. This should be episode five. I think it's only episode three, because like I say, the family and I have been sick. So uh, we're all feeling better now, though. You know, I mean, that's the good news. And uh, that will be the end of episode three. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'm back on a regular content schedule tomorrow.